Oh my god. Uh oh. <laughs> Hello, good evening. Thanks for joining us this late in the day. Uh, I know we stand between you and the party, so we're going to try to make it entertainment. Um, so tonight we're going to talk about um, OpenStack, SCN, and NFV, all the three-letter acronyms in one slide, so this should be good. Um, so without further ado, let's jump into the introductions. Um, my name is Valentina Laria, and I work for PlumGrid. Uh, I run product and solution marketing um, training, and I do a lot of work with customers. Um, I've been a member of the OpenStack community for a number of years. My very first summit was the Santa Clara one, so many years back, and it's exciting to see how the community has grown, and it's awesome to be in Tokyo. I love Tokyo. Um, I do a lot of work with customers, I do a lot of uh, education around uh, product adoption, um, help customers take technologies and products and transform their businesses. And uh, PlumGrid is a player in the uh, neutron area, in the networking area. We have a uh, micro-segmentation offering for OpenStack that enables multi-tenant solutions. Uh, it's built on a, a really uh, novel and revolutionary technology in the data plane that is called the iAvisor, and you'll discover more about it uh, later on. And uh, we provide a set of uh, comprehensive networking and security services to um, OpenStack users. Hi, and my name is Rima Yantel. I'm a senior solutions architect at Red Hat. Um, I joined Red Hat out of a telco community. I worked for Verizon for about 14 years, lots of telco experience, and now I'm bringing all that experience to uh, this new software-defined uh, way of doing things, uh, working on NFV. I primarily work with our partners, like PlumGrid, um, focusing on all things related to NFV, OpenStack, software-defined networking. And um, without further ado, let's jump in. Okay. So um, if you attended the keynote today and if you've been around uh, OpenStack, you probably heard about network function virtualization. A um, few years ago, and I was actually at the beginning of it, uh, carriers realized that the current model was not sustainable. They had uh, custom, highly customized uh, equipment that was very expensive and that was running uh, services that were very complex, difficult to operate, maintain, um, basically had to be uh, closely babysat and uh, operations in any telco would tell you that uh, it's a huge job to manage the network in a telco, to manage the services, to make sure uh, you meet all the requirements uh, of your customers, as well as in many cases uh, regulations because of uh, you know essential services that telcos provide. So um, introducing new services in that environment was always uh, very complex. Any new feature you want to add, it's you know 18 months uh, lead time. Um, so. How do you sustain that and at the same time stay in business? So a few years ago, Telco started looking at ways of revolutionizing their business, uh, joining this whole agile, over-the-top crowd that was taking their you know, meals and eating them <laughs> pretty much. So, and they started looking to cloud, cloud model. Um, it seemed uh, like a you know, clear path towards a new more agile uh, business that would allow you to provide services faster, easier, uh, better operated, and uh, always on. So they still want their services to be available 24-7. Uh, you know, that requirement doesn't go away. You want it to be affordable, you want them to be reliable, and you want to be able to serve all of your customers from consumer market to enterprises, small, medium businesses, everybody. And you want it to be affordable to yourself and to the customer. So comes, in comes NFE, Network Function Virtualization. Um, and, but it has to be a very special time, type of virtualization. It has to be ready for the telco environment um, which I already described, right? Six nines, 
30 seconds of downtime per year, but done in a different way from what telcos used to do. Not because you have tightly coupled hardware and software and everything is deployed in quad, uh, you know, quads for redundancy. No, you want to do it in a more agile, uh, better managed way. Uh, you deploy it on CADS hardware. So, you know, uh, silicon that's available to everybody that can run x86 uh, from a laptop to your outing. Um, you use open source software, which is, uh, you know, uh, in one way cheaper, but in the other way uh, faster changing because you don't have to wait for one vendor to add that one feature that you want. Uh, it can happen much faster and it can be shared between many different uh, users at the same time. It can be tested faster and can be deployed faster as well. Um, it's community driven, right? More eyes on, uh, on the code fewer bugs, that's a uh, red hat way, right? That's what we are uh, uh, promoting. Um, that's why we work with open source software. You have APIs that are open, that are standard, that can anybody can write to. Um, and basically, you still want all of that, but on the other hand, you want it to be fault tolerant. You don't want your network failing. Uh, you don't want your calls being dropped. You don't want your video to be, um, you know, lagging and, uh, all the other services that Telco provide. Uh, you want your VPNs to be secure, etc. So fault tolerant, and you want to have automated deployment because you know you don't want to have to rely on one person taking care of everything. You want it. You want machines to take care of everything, right? Um, so scalable, upgradable, all of that um, ease of operations is one of the top worries for uh, a telco and all of that they want uh, and what they looked for is available on OpenStack. So your uh, network function virtualization infrastructure, infrastructure and your virtualized infrastructure management, that's OpenStack. And let's look at it a little bit closer. So uh, infrastructure in is not just the hardware underneath, but everything that runs on top of that hardware. Software defined networking, storage, compute, um, and something that controls all of that infrastructure. So you want your controllers to be reliable. You want your compute, uh, networking, and storage to be distributed. Um, you want them to be also reliable, always available. You don't want any bottlenecks, you want high performance, um, and you want security because of the difference of all the uh, tenants you have. Uh, you don't want them clashing with each other, right? If you have, as a customer, a Coca-Cola Corporation and Pepsi-Cola Corporation, you never want them to see each other, but you still want to have the same infrastructure that runs applications for both of them. So security, uh, also one of the uh, top uh, concerns in any telco. Okay. So you have this great infrastructure, you have a way to control that infrastructure. How do you manage and operate it? So uh, something that's not currently in the OpenStack, but the work is being done to introduce it to OpenStack, plus it gives um, you know other uh, community to expand on it, not just OpenStack, but other add-ons, uh, other products that can work around it, and that's management and uh, orchestration space. So uh, right now, um, Mano, as defined by Etsy NFV, uh, has certain functionality, but uh, that functionality is going to get expanded because what you want in your networking is high visibility, you know, to know, you want to know exactly where each session is going. You want to know where each packet is. You know, you want to know where your events are. You want to know if a failure occurs or if it's about to occur is even better. So um, you want your uh, ability to heal um, your services. You want the ability to deploy your services easily 
and you want the way to manage those services easily. So that's what the uh, goal of MANA uh, portion of NFV is. And um, things that are already in OpenStack, um, like Celometer, um, project that people are working on right now uh, for virtualized network function management called Tacker. Um, but it's not enough. It needs to be expanded. You need m more ways of getting information about what's happening in the layer of the infrastructure as well as visibility into your applications. So that's portion that is not really present right now in OpenStack and can be still addressed. Um, and what the whole reason why you're doing it, the whole point of having NFV is your virtualized network functions, right? You, the only reason you have a platform is so you can run applications on top of that platform. Um, and those applications can span a gamut of IT traditional applications uh, to very specialized telco applications. And here you have to remember that um, not all of those applications have been designed to live in a cloud. The ones that have been, excellent, right? They already we have a platform for that. Uh, the ones that haven't, the ones that require, um, you know, certain hooks into high availability, into resiliency, into reliability, um, the ones that act as a pet instead of, of as a cattle, they also need to be able to live on this platform in the telco environment. Uh, you can't just say, okay, just work with the cloud applications. It just doesn't work that way. So you have to um, take into account uh, stateful applications as well as stateless control plane and data plane applications and you need to be able to treat it, uh, each of those applications or services according to their needs. So um, with the VNF ecosystem a variety of different vendors are providing applications and some of them are porting them from the traditional ones so you see things like applications from uh, traditional telco vendors like Cisco and Nokia or Alcatel Lucent and then you see newcomers to the space and uh, their applications are quite different and uh, sometimes better uh, suited for this environment. So as a whole carrier platform uh, what you end up is something that is cost-effective, easy to operate, and can run a variety of different applications in a way that can be easily managed by a traditional telco operations. Um, so you want, to provide, you want to make sure they can expose through very standardized and open means all sorts of information about the applications and the platform and sustain the requirements of the resiliency and high availability that telcos are requiring. And in, uh, from the point of view of OpenStack, being able to deploy your controllers highly available, uh, being able to deploy things uh, in a distributed fashion, being able to have your applications run uh, on top of that platform is um, what will provide you with the carrier uh, specific environment and allow them the companies that adapt this way allow them to be first to the market with the newest and greatest and uh, applications even beyond uh, what they've been able to imagine up till now um, so uh, from the point of view of Red Hat uh, we provide that platform we have a Vim uh, which is OpenStack and the network function virtualization infrastructure in terms of uh, compute, which is also part of OpenStack, and uh, storage, which is our uh, Ceph product. So it's a highly distributed, reliable storage. And then we work with our partners to provide all the other pieces that are not part of our portfolio. So one of the partners, um, such as PlumGrid, provides uh, SDN capability uh, that give um, 
a lot of flexibility to the underlying networking that sustain this platform. We have a huge ecosystem of VNFs. We are very open and we work with everybody who uh, is willing to support OpenStack as their platform. And we work with a variety of management and orchestration uh, vendors as well. So all together you get this full NFV realized um, and suited to the uh, carrier environment. So SDN, if you're not familiar with it, one of the definition is a separation of a control and data plane, wh where control plane is logically centralized and data plane can be either software or hardware, but distributed and controlled by the control plane, uh, where control plane can control multiple uh, distributed uh, data planes. And uh, instead of having hardware provide you all the functionality, you actually have your software functions uh, running on top of very generic hardware. And following that thought even farther, each individual network function, instead of running on a customized monolithic hardware, um, very specific uh, to a particular vendor implementation, proprietary, instead of that you migrate it into software world, uh, either on a virtual machine or uh, going f even farther in a container running on a generic hardware uh, where it can be very quickly deployed, upgraded, changed, uh, updated, that um, with additional hooks and additional development can meet the performance requirements, which might not quite be the same as the customized hardware, but good enough, and uh, with some uh, you know, fault tolerance and reliability as well. And let me hand it off to Valentina. Thank you. Um, so maybe just going back to the previous slide for a second. Oops, if I can. <laughs> um, so what it's common to, to this model is that you can see that there is an evolution. Um, and what a telco or anyone that is looking at adopting an FV is left with, uh, it's really a variety of form factors, deployment models, uh, and different levels of, of performance. Um, so something that um, you know we started looking at as um, you know as PlumGrid, but also as just you know working with customers was how do we bring some of those features and functionalities in a more abstract way right into the kernel. Um, so that's what I'm going to cover in, in the next um, in the next section, looking at some of the uh, technology evolution that have happened in the kernel space that enable a variety of uh, virtual network functions to be brought right inside each compute node. When I say kernel, I mean I can take each of these BNFs being switching, routing, load balancing, firewalling, and deploy them right inside your compute layer, making them available to your bare metal containers, VMs, in a more cohesive way. Um, so um, you know, I want to introduce you to a Linux collaboration project that is called the IOVisor, and I'm very proud of being part of that. Um, and the IOVisor project uh, satisfies the need for extensibility and programmability at the kernel level, where um, this programmability and extensibility now forces the creation of um, an even broader set of network functions ecosystem. Uh, again, and what it's unique from uh, the traditional model that you're all familiar with is that instead of leveraging just you know, traditional form factors of physical, virtual, and container-based appliances, you now start distributing the functionality of implementing these features inside each of your compute elements. Um, so imagine, you know, back to Rima's point earlier, um, you know, imagining these as it can really enable a more cloud automation type of model for deploying these functions. Um, you know, from a performance perspective, if you have a common abstraction layer, then it's much easier to work with uh, performance, um, you know, improvements and platforms and frameworks. Um, and, you know, what the IOVisor is an example of such technology does for you is that it brings the ability to create right in the kernel uh, very generic I.O. modules. And with I.O. modules, I mean, 
the ability to define manipulations on packets, functions on packets. Um, for those of you that are not familiar with this type of technology, the best way to think about it is like, it's like writing a C++ code program, something that you will write in user space, but instead of running user space, push it down in the kernel. And you can have as many of those programs run chained together, giving you the ability to form chains of functions and services right inside your kernel. Now, the iOvisor as a framework, it's a very generic technology. It's built on top of Berkeley Packet Filters, BPF, for those of you that are familiar with this. And it can be applied not just to networking. Um, so, uh, as I said, I spend quite a bit of my time with, with telcos and cloud customers in general. And uh, one of the feedback that they gave me, they give me every time they see um, the iOvisor technology is, you know, how important it is for them to look at how this technology enables visualization, analytics, tracing, right inside, once again, the kernel model. Um, you know, traditionally, the way we be monitoring the network infrastructure has been um, very often based on agents, sampling of packets, you know, um, our spanning packets up to a collector is it would then go and analyze. So technologies like the iOvisor instead help you bring a visualization layer right inside each compute node, really helping with your troubleshooting and monitoring. Um, back to what Rima was talking about earlier, being proactive in understanding that an issue is coming, that something is about to break in your infrastructure, you need to go and fix it. Now, um, when you look at how the IOVisor impacts uh, VN VNFs and NFV, right? Um, what it does for you is that it takes any generic network function that you have seen implemented as an appliance, um, as you know, we discussed many examples there, right? And what it does for you is it gives you the framework to push all these functions right inside the kernel space. And for those of you that are familiar with network functions virtualization, you know that there is a concept of service chaining. So defining that for a specific application, for packets that belong to a specific application, you want these packets through servers as chain of functions, right? You want them to go through function one, then through function two, then through function three, like right? things like routing, firewalling, load balancing, right? So what the IOVisor framework does for you is that enables you to define that chain right inside the kernel itself. Now, um, one of the things that gets telco customers excited about these type of technologies is that um, we don't have a crystal ball, right? We don't know exactly what the future is going to look like uh, in you know, a number of years from now. And you know, the cloud model, it's really enabling a transformation of the business opportunities for the telco as well. So the beauty of technology like this is that um, they're fully extensible. So say that tomorrow you, Mr. Telco, uh, have a new use case in mind and need a new network function or a new security function, a new tracing function. A framework like this enables you to just go and create it and add it right inside your service chaining. Um, so this is a very uh, strong transformation that we're seeing. Uh, and I'm going to give you some examples of how this gets applied to use cases that should come familiar to, to you as an audience um, if you have been you know, uh, looking at NFV as an application in your environment. Uh, now, before I talk about the use cases, I'm going to mention a concept that it's, um, it's quite unique to what PlumGrid does, but I hope it's going to help you um, kind of visualize how um, you know, this technology can then be applied to an uh, NFV uh, use case. And we're not really talking products here, but just to give you an idea of um, how you can kind of uh, templatize and summarize the network needs of applications. So we use a construct that we call virtual domains. Now, um, for those of you that are completely new to uh, PlumGrid and have never heard of this, the best way to think about it is that it's like a private data center. It's like bubble that you define for an application, for a user, for a tenant. Um, and inside this bubble, uh, that it's completely decoupled from your physical infrastructure, uh, you can define any arbitrary network topology. Right? So back to the uh, NFV model, this will be your service chaining definition, where I say for, for my application, my application has two tiers. It has a database tier, a database tier, and an app tier. And they're going to be connected in a specific topology, um, and they're going to have some security policies in between them, and so on and so forth. 
Uh, now, uh, these virtual domains, this bubble, right, allow you to create your uh, virtual network uh, infrastructure and to define this chaining of features and functionality. Um, now, what a technology like Yadov, and this, I mean, um, it's, you know, if you put lines instead of icons, will look very similar to what Neutron does with, you know, networks and routers and external networks and so on and so forth, right? Now, uh, what a technology like the iAvisor does for you is that it takes this definition of a network and it makes this distributed. Uh, what I mean by that is that um, it's going to make this network live across every single compute, physical compute node in your environment. Um, so it's, it's a mental shift from um, functions, network functions being available through appliances, right, where you need to procure an appliance, bring it up, even if it's software, right? You're going to have to manually bring it up or automate the bring up of that, and then worry about making it available, uh, making it redundant, uh, you know, having it uh, work for, uh, you know, reliably for, for a number of applications, making it scale out. This brings all these features and functionality right inside your kernel layer, um, making it a lot easier to uh, bring, you know, the, the cloud model to a telco and satisfy the stringent requirements that a telco business has. Now, um, if we look at a couple of use cases that should be familiar, uh, the first one, uh, obviously everyone is kind of agreeing that uh, the virtualization of the CPE is one of the you know, key applications for NFV. It's what everyone, you know, thinks it's coming, agrees it's coming. So what I want to show here is to show you how uh, this kernel technology that I just discussed, and obviously all the innovation that is coming with OpenStack that Rima went through earlier on in the presentation, enable uh, a transformation of uh, the CPE. So if you look at uh, the existing solution, right? Um, you know why is CPE such an interesting uh, scenario for a telcos to you know take care of? Um, you have these, you know, edge devices, edge networking devices. Uh, they're standalone. Uh, they are, you know, uh, spread it everywhere, right? And um, and they do provide key services, right? Things like, you know, IP management and quality of services, routing, NAT. Now, um, why they do provide critical services? They're usually built on pretty cheap hardware, right? Uh, so they're prone to failures. Um, and because they're, they're running complex software, right, they can provide these complex and advanced services, they're also prone to uh, failures from a, from a software perspective. Uh, now, one of the things that is attractive to a telco that is looking at the NFV transformation is to say, okay, how can I break away from this coupling of features with hardware in a scenario like the CPE? And how can I come up with a model where instead of having my control plane and data plane both running in the remote CPE location. How can I bring some of that back into my cloud, my NFV cloud, so that I can centrally manage and operate and push upgrades and add new features, and at the same time have um, a simple, easier to upgrade data plane running at all the CPE locations. Now, a technology like what we have just discussed, so a kind of the pure um, let's, let's start with pure kind of SDN model, right? So an SDN model will tell you, okay, you have control plane, data plane separation. Um, you bring some, you know, kind of uh, functionality with a data plane right in the CPE, and you keep your control plane running in the cloud. Now, one of the challenges, right, is that often when you do this separation, you end up with a very basic data plane running inside your CPE. So you still need to rely on the kind of the central control plane plus an advanced data plane running in the central location to enforce the security, the NAT, uh, and the, the more advanced features and functionality. Now you can see it right away that um, a model like this doesn't quite scale, scale well, right? Because if you need to plant packets back to a central location, um, you know, your performance is going to be suboptimal. If you ever, you know, experience a failure uh, and an interruption of services between the cloud and your local CPE, um, you're, you're not going to be able to provide the features that you need. So you don't have support for what we call headless mode, right? Where you chop the head of your um, remote data planes and you still want to be able to provide these services uh, to the local endpoints. So um, technologies like the IOVisor uh, and many others that are you know, happening 
right now, what they do, what they enable is you know, the ability to run the full data plane that you need right inside the CPE. Um, so at that point, you have a pure model where your control plane is just a control plane, and all it's doing is you know, interacting from an API perspective together with the rest of your open stack, uh, so you can automate it and configure it, and the final sort of applications on top of it. And your data plane is then locally providing all the security routing functionalities that you need. Now, if we look uh, inside the, the CPE, um, and in the example of an IOVisor enabled uh, data plane, what happens is that uh, we have our co cloud control plane running remotely. We have like a local um, a kind of mini control plane that can talk with the central control plane and take care of upgrades and stuff like that. But then you're capable of defining all your kernel functions um, that get implemented right inside your, your CPE environment. And I don't want to go into too many details, but certainly open to talk more offline if you're curious on how exactly this gets implemented. But the idea is that every single packet that is going to traverse your kernel um, can be serviced through these this functions here. So you can see how the model completely transforms from physical appliances to virtual appliances to these fully distributed in kernel kind of functions. Now, um, another example that I really like, uh, I'm very passionate about, it's, um, it's a customer of ours that we work very closely with for a number of months now. And um, what they're doing is they're building a communications as a service uh, cloud solution. Now, um, if you ask them, they probably wouldn't even call themselves an NFV cloud provider. Uh, but what they're doing is really building, you know, uh, bringing a lot of the NFV models uh, into their cloud environments. Um, so what they do is that um, they work with small companies, small customers that are uh, starting up a business and they want to create a call center, a support center. Um, they don't want to incur the you know, hardware expenses um, and software expenses of bringing up one of those environments themselves. Um, and so they go and work with this customer to um, get these communications as a service environments being you know, created for them. Now, um, when these customers first started looking at uh, OpenStack, one of the biggest challenges that they faced was that they wanted to be able to create um, customer environments that would encompass a number of network functions chained together. And they wanted to use a number of different vendors concurrently in each of these environments. Um, and they were using a collection of physical appliances and virtual appliances and trying to stitch everything together, plus using some of the kind of physical network constructs of VLANs for, for isolation. Now, uh, this is something that might sound very familiar to many of you because many come from, from that and are, you know, that's really the beginning of, of the journey. And uh, you know, they were sharing with us that it would take them things like 75 tickets to be open for any of these environments to be created, and anywhere from like three to four weeks for a single environment to come up. Now, if you're building a cloud model and a cloud business, that's clearly not acceptable, right? So they started looking at um, you know, solutions out there, trying to figure out, obviously, you know, looking at OpenStack, uh, and started talking with the community, and starting trying to figure out how to you know, bring this agility and automation into their, their environment. Uh, and they really had the requirements to you know, be able to carve out these multi-tenant environments, right? Um, as Rima pointed out earlier, um, especially in a telco kind of scenario, it's very important to have this strict multi-tenancy and isolation uh, so that you can you know, isolate uh, components um, throughout you know, every function that you, that you provide. So um, what we did with them is we helped them design a model based on this um, you know, IOVisor uh, kernel component where um, they could just define uh, through the concept of virtual domains, these customer environments. Now, um, what we do when we define a virtual domain, as I said earlier, we you know, help you define how you chain all these functions together. Now, nothing uh, tells you that all these functions need to be plum grid, right? So in this specific example, what we did was we picked some functions from plum grid, and then we picked some functions from our partners. And we work with you know, load balancers and firewalls and uh, routing appliances, and we help them stitch all of these things together. 
Now, the, the beauty of this model is that um, you can fully automate it from beginning to end because you can define a, a virtual domain as a template. Um, and by defining some of these functions as third-party functions, you define that they need to be stitched together. And we help you just automatically stitch all of them there. Some of the functions that are more common, we can implement them right inside the kernel, right? So again, you have this distributed high performance layer that gives you kind of the switching and the routing and the isolation and the security. Um, so, you know, I find this um, a very appealing kind of, you know, case study and scenario where you can see, uh, you know, the transformation of their business going from, you know, three to four weeks and, you know, close to 100 tickets, right, as I said earlier, to, you know, running the scripts in a few seconds and being able to bring up this environment. Now, I'm not claiming that it takes a few seconds to bring up a customer from beginning to end, right, because you still have to potentially procure new hardware and you know, make sure that the environment is up and running. But just from an automation and configuration of the environment, this is something that you can really squeeze into a very short amount of time. So um, you know, for them, what was also important was to be able to scale, scale out and scale in resources, right? As, um, as their customer demands would fluctuate, right? They wanted to be able to um, let them grow and let them shrink and have all the network functions go with that. Um, so again, a kernel kind of base model will automatically scale in and scale out with, with you because it exists where you have VMs and it just doesn't exist where you don't have VMs, right? So it really helps with this kind of dynamic, uh, elastic model here. So hopefully this was a, a good example for, for you to get a feel of the transformation that we're seeing in the, uh, especially in the virtual network function ecosystem for, for NFV and how you know SDN, it's helping transform their business, this business, and you know obviously how OpenStack, um, it's providing the underlying platform to foster this innovation. And um, uh, right now, I'd like to open it for any question or comment, uh, if anyone. Sure. Do you mind using the mic? Since you have it right there. <laughs> IOVisor uh, is mainly developed in C, yes, I understand? Uh, so, no, uh, there's frameworks. Uh, so, IOVisor has uh, kernel components and user space and development tools. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's different flavors and SDKs that can be used in different languages. Okay. Yes, C is one of those. And if you guys are interested, there is sessions on that tomorrow, actually, so during collaboration day. Any other question or comment? Well, thanks a lot for attending the session. Uh, we both, Red Hat and PlumGrid, have a booth at the Marketplace, and the expo is open tomorrow morning. So um, if you want to chat more, feel free to stop by. And we're going to be hanging around a little longer here if anyone wants to talk more. Thanks again. Thank you.